behalf of the Center for Water Research, it's my great pleasure to uh, have Dr. Govindan Kutti with us. I know him from a few years when we had traveled together uh, in the... 2019. Right in the middle of winter, we had gone to Buffalo, uh, <laughs> where the temperatures were a minus 15, 20. <laughs> and so, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you. Under much warmer <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> conditions. Com comfortable. In any case, uh, he is an expert on what are called Kanat systems or Kanat mm -hmm. systems in India. And these are underground wells, horizontal wells that essentially take water from water rich areas to water deficient areas. And this is a technology which has its roots in the Middle East, but he'll explain why when they come to India, they really become very different. And so, Every time we talk of Kanats, people say, oh, it's a technology that's come from the Middle East, which is absolutely true. But by the time it gets used here, it takes on local flavors of its own. And so it's a lot more sophisticated. And uh, he knows it better than anybody else, because as opposed to those of us who study these systems from above ground, he actually goes inside these tunnels and knows a lot about them, having seen them from the inside and underground. So please. Right. Thank you. First of all, let me uh, thank uh, Pushkarji for uh, uh, having me here. I am from Kerala, uh, as most of you know now by now. Right, I um, uh, work with uh, government college there uh, as assistant professor of uh, geography. Right, uh, have been in this uh, profession for nearly ten years now. Right, but before that, I, I was with uh, UNESCO's Indian Heritage Cities Network Foundation. Right, uh, uh, which was initially a program of uh, UNESCO and uh, later on uh, it was uh, uh, you know, uh, uprooted from UNESCO and uh, uh, put as a separate organization as and registered as an NGO. So, I was the one to do that. Right. So, uh, we had uh, 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 sub full support of government of Karnataka and uh, I was posted as uh, CEO of that and I was based and you know, we were based at uh, uh, Mysore. We got a uh, 1850s uh, quarters, professor's quarters, we got it restored and uh, <laughs> made it into our uh, uh, office. Right? Uh, and neighboring to that uh, was the quarters of uh, Dr. S. Radhakrishnan, so, uh, he had stayed there. So, that was also restored during that same period. So, it was uh, the work, all this work started then. Uh, so, um, I, I was put on a task to do a uh, conservation plan, right? You know, to uh, so that it can be incorporated into the master plan of Bidar. So the master plan work was going on at that time. So we were asked to find out uh, heritage entities there, you now which can be you know uh, preserved or maybe some improvement can be made from tourism perspective and all. And we were asked to prepare a plan for that. So uh, initial uh, Ricky of this uh, happened in uh, August uh, of 2012, right? So, uh, 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 our uh, stakeholder organization in Karnataka was uh, KUIDFC, Karnataka Urban uh, uh, Infrastructure Development uh, uh, and Finance Corporation plus the K Karnataka uh, Cultural Department and uh, uh, the Tourism Department. So, they uh, were supporting us uh, financially to do this. So, uh, and uh, uh, KUIDFC wanted us to do this. Uh, uh, a project as such. So, uh, you know, we were trying to identify the projects that can be taken up for, you know, uh, creating DPRs and then. So, the uh, Bidar district, uh, uh, here it is called district collector, I think, right? District head. So, in Karnataka, it is called district deputy commissioners, right? So, uh, the person who was there uh, as a deputy commissioner, uh, sorry, the uh, KUIDFC director was also, was initially uh, the uh, district collector for Bidar. So, he, so, when we were on field, so he called me and said there is a tunnel there, right, go and have a look at it, right. So, this uh, uh, tunnel may be, he, his interpretation was, is probably a water system, we do not know, but uh, no, there are sayings that it is, uh, you know, probably an escape route that was created by then uh, kings and all. So, uh, then we went, we went there. So, uh, you know, once we, I started walking and people were, you know, people who were with me at that time, they said do not go in because, you know, it is dangerous, we do not know what is there inside. So, I went in, so I went in nearly up to two vents, uh, that is, the, there are wells over it. So, and I could, uh, you know, realize that it is a pure water system because we uh, in geography have been learning 
about these traditional systems you know, across uh, across the world, different systems that are there. So that is how this work initially started. And then uh, uh, I left the organization when uh, you know, a lot of homely pressure, I had to take a job at uh, Kerala, right, <laughs> got <laughs> appointed as uh, uh, you know, government appointment came in, so at that time, so 2013 uh, uh, and I left the organization by somewhere around July, I joined uh, uh, Kerala government, right. So this is uh, uh, the uh, work, so I started doing that work in 2012 and then uh, registered this as uh, my PhD work in 2013-14 uh, uh, period and, uh, and said so that uh, uh, doctoral degree is still pending maybe another three months because <laughs> it, is, it has already been submitted that has not come into my hand so uh, so this is just just to introduce you to the system now many of you may not be knowing this right so this is a, uh, a typical cross section that has been given right uh, of uh, a Kare system or a Kanat system now they, they have different names in different countries uh, uh, no, uh, if you go to Saudi Arabia, Oman, no, Aflaj is the name that is being used, right. uh, Spain it is uh, Galeria, right. you will find them uh, across the world, right. uh, uh, probably because of travellers or maybe because of trade relations, these, have, uh, these systems have reached in many locations. Now, this is, uh, you know, in Iran, uh, what you will find is Iran as most of you know, it right, is a dry uh, area desert desertic environment basically arid uh, semi arid to arid conditions right very uh, uh, the only except for the southern portions where they receive good amount of rainfall rest of the area is uh, normally dry right but they have very good mountains on the northern side that is towards that caspian sea you have the elbrus mountains right which is normally snow capped right so uh, what they did was they have dug tunnels from there from the Elbrus mountain uh, lower ranges, right. So, snow melt water gets into these tunnels or infiltrates uh, the soil and then they bring this tunnel to their settlements. So, that is how initially uh, or that is that is how the systems are in existence now, right. So, and in Iran you will find there are around uh, 38,000 functional systems and some of the cities still use these systems as uh, a major water supply thing and it is you know uh, wherever you have this Kanat basins that, that, that they call uh, you will find it as uh, bore welling is banned, bore welling or uh, any kind of uh, deep ground water uh, you know uh, boring for ground water is banned there. So that is how they are protecting it, in India it is you can think about it right. <laughs> so this is the basic thing, so uh, when we look at the history uh, you will find the first ever documentation uh, of this uh, can be found somewhere uh, in uh, uh, 202 BCE. Uh, so, what is the primary use of this? Is it for domestic or agricultural? Both, both. In these areas as well, where they, they have prevented people from uh, drilling deeper? Uh, no, the, it, is, it is for both because uh, uh, no, they, they, uh, I'll, uh, when we go ahead, we will see those slides. Now, uh, uh, why it is uh, relevant in those areas, right? Because it is entirely semi-arid, there is no other source of water and the snow melt uh, happens by summer, you uh, know, uh, when we are into this uh, April, May period, uh, sun is in the northern hemisphere and all this snow melts off and it goes into, goes as, you know, uh, most of it gets absorbed as ground water uh, uh, in the uh, Iranian uh, plateau area. So that is the only thing that they can tap. Uh, there is no other source and uh, uh, these have been ex in existence uh, uh, in the you no know, before uh, our common era times right so that is when we have that first uh, documentation polybius is the first person who has ever documented it right uh, and he calls them as hyponoi right so uh, that is the the term that he has used so maybe some uh, you know tunneled water system that is what it means i think right so but uh, the uh, in the modern research, the uh, first documentation was done by uh, Henry Gobault, right. So uh, what he says, how these systems came into existence was uh, the villages were anyway facing uh, drought like conditions. So there were lot of copper mines in Mount Ararat region that is towards the uh, northeastern part of uh, uh, Iran basically, right. So uh, they had lot of copper mines and the copper mines used to get flooded because of the snow melting, snow melt water is getting into that, right. So they were digging tunnels, right, from their, uh, no, their mining shafts, they were digging tunnels to drain this water. 
So, uh, uh, in collaboration with these miners, the villagers extended these tunnels to their village, uh, villages. So, that is how the uh, initial story of development of uh, no, the uh, Kanats come in. Uh, that is the, the, the record, uh, the, uh, I think th that is the only recorded uh, story that is available as of now, how the, they might have uh, started this. Right. So, uh, uh, as of now, we consider Persia or the Iran area to be the uh, origin, uh, no, origin place where uh, uh, the Kanats uh, came in. But there are uh, conflicting uh, uh, what you call researches as well. So, there are a few research that has come from Saudi Arabia and all. So, which says that you no, know, it started there. Right. And there was also a claim by uh, an Indian, right, uh, called Mr. Sh I think Shankaran Nair. It is a just a blog that he has written uh, about Kasar Kod Surangas. Right, uh, uh, which is a smaller system uh, when compared to what we, uh, the uh, Kanats are. Right, so he says that it, no, probably it might have begun here, and because of trade relations, uh, no, the the technology got exchanged uh, to that. So, uh, but we don't believe that. So, uh, uh, we pr uh, no normally uh, most of the researchers go by the uh, uh, thought that no, it started in uh, Persia. So, uh, and it has, dif uh, no, the diffusion has taken place all across uh, basically to uh, India and China through the Silk Route and uh, also through the rulers we had, right. We had lots of rulers from Persia, uh, no, who were, uh, 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 no, who were uh, ruling in various kingdoms, right. So, the, you know, in the Dakan area, the Bahmanis, right, or uh, Delhi, we had the Khiljis, no. So, it is only in the Dakan <laughs> that you will find these systems that are there, right. So, uh, when we go into, so this is uh, the photograph of Bidar, right. So, the only system uh, which you can directly walk into, right. There are no other uh, uh, systems where, uh, no, you can directly walk into uh, this and this, uh, this also uh, has become like this, was the uh, mouth section the, uh, the or the cliff has collapsed and it, uh, it is providing an access now, right. So, in India, you will find uh, uh, they are located in the uh, Deccan region, right. So, these were, uh, this entire area uh, was uh, ruled by the Bahmanis, right, from uh, 13th, uh, th 13th century onwards, uh, 13, 13, no, 14th century onwards, right, 14, 15, right. So, uh, uh, probably, you know, uh, Pushkar will tell you more about history part. So, it was uh, uh, the, uh, the Bahmani rulers, so initial rulers, the Hassan Gangu and all, they were uh, the nobles in uh, uh, Muhammad bin Tughlaq's court, right? And they, you know, there were so so many nobles, and they had a rebellion, and uh, uh, that is how this uh, Bahmani got established. And initially, they were in, uh, uh, you know, their capital was in uh, uh, Dolatabad itself. From there, they shifted to uh, uh, Gulbarga, and from Gulbarga to uh, Bidar, right? So, and uh, one of the possibility that is seen is probably, you know, the, the Bidar was comparatively secure. And uh, what availability of water was, uh, you know, comparatively better than what we had uh, in uh, Gulbarga. Right. So, so this uh, 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 this is the chronological order, probably, right? Uh, the systems might have been created in India, right? So, uh, Bidar might have been the first place where uh, we might have uh, uh, a you know Kanat or Kare system. In India, it is called a Kare system. So, uh, this um, uh, was created. Now, why I say this is that there are no other references, right? And uh, the only reference that we find uh, is of uh, uh, Burhanpur, right? Which is very clear that Mughal documentation it is very clear. The documentation that we find for Bidar is only one, that is uh, the Bakhar uh, uh, poet poetry or literature that we say, right? It is a Marathi uh, poetry kind of a thing, folk poetry kind of a thing, where uh, you know uh, they mention about uh, Ahmad Shah valley having dug many nehers right uh, uh, for uh, irrigation as well as uh, uh, drinking water purpose in the uh, city so that is the only uh, reference that you find on bidar so bidar we have uh, three systems we'll go into that one by one so in total uh, we have somewhere around 38 uh, 37 to 38 systems in uh, india right and of which uh, majority are there in uh, uh, maharashtra right <laughs> you, you have it in uh, uh, Aurangabad and uh, Ahmednagar and uh, 
uh, some of the Mahmud Nagar and Aurangabad you have uh, very good documentations available, right? Um, uh, even the British time documentations are also there because they were using the system uh, for uh, uh, their own, you know, water supply uh, as a water supply system for the city, right? So, uh, and Burhanpur one, most of them might be knowing. Yeah, please. Pune uh, is uh, basically a, a conveyor system, right? Uh, it was developed much later and it is completely uh, closed, right? So, you have, uh, uh, I do not think there is a groundwater input into it that is coming, right? Uh, uh, it is entirely the lake water that is uh, transported and you know, conveyed to the, th that is what I believe because uh, the sections I had seen is completely covered, you know, uh, even the floor, uh, the gallery part of it is uh, uh, cemented with lime concrete or you uh, know they have laid this uh, basalt stone. So, uh, maybe there are sections where it is there, but uh, not aware of it, right. So, maybe we will have to include it if <laughs> it is there. No, there, there are uh, you know, uh, um, I, uh, when I published my uh, earlier paper, right. So, the, there was a call from US, right, one uh, someone who knows uh, or studied uh, uh, the uh, Dalatabad area. So, he said there is, he has seen tunnel systems there. So, uh, then I went there, but I could not find anything, right. So, the, there are possibilities that it is there also because, uh, no, uh, uh, again, uh, Dalatabad you will find water scarcity is very high, right, even now, right. Now, uh, so this entire section you will find uh, entire all, all that we have is in the Deccan Plateau region, right, and Deccan Plateau region, as you all know, uh, is deposited with uh, uh, volcanic material, right. So, somewhere uh, from uh, uh, 120 million years to around 75 million years, we had uh, uh, the subcontinent was somewhere uh, over the reunion hotspot, right, which is in the Indian Ocean. This reunion hotspot is still active, right. <laughs> so, uh, no, plate tectonics you might have learnt about it. So, there were multiple layers of deposition, no, that uh, no, in between each deposition there may have been. Uh, million years of gap as well, right. So, uh, one layer got deposited, might have got weathered, then another layer came in. So, you will find that uh, it is stacked one above the other. So, that, that kind of a uh, scenario. So, here uh, there are areas which receive uh, very less rainfall and there are areas which receive uh, comparatively better rainfall, right. Uh, we will go into that as well. So, if you see here uh, that uh, uh, approximate rainfall uh, map is given. So, uh, all those areas which is on the uh, you know uh, eastern side of our western ghat, leeward side basically. So, uh, it receives comparatively very less rainfall uh, uh, 75 uh, no 75 centimeters or less. Right. So, we classify that as a semi arid area and uh, from Bidar is in the border uh, of uh, this kind of uh, semi arid condition you can say. Bidar receives a little higher than 75 centimeters, maybe it goes up to uh, 80 centimeters to 100 centimeters at times, right. So, that is why, uh, no, Bidar, uh, if you uh, look into Bidar's geology, you have a unique structure there, right. So, uh, which you will find in some places uh, in Maharashtra as well. If you go to uh, uh, Mahabalesh, kya bolte hai usko? Maha, huh? Mahabaleshwar, here, no, in uh, the temple that is there in uh, Western Ghats, Mahabaleshwar only, right. So, you will find the cappings, laterite cappings there redstone. So, similar uh, th there is a 600 square kilometer plateau that has got developed there uh, in Bidar, right, which is because it receives more rainfall and uh, 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 the uh, leaching of the stone or weathering of the basalt stone happens much faster because of uh, the dry wet and dry conditions and they convert into uh, laterite. So, if you go there you can see actually if you get into this tunnel you can see the layers, you have the uh, basalt at the bed of it and then you have this uh, uh, you know rounded basalts which are weathered uh, basically uh, materials and then above that you have the clay materials right, uh, lithomargic clay that we call. Then you have the gravelly kind of uh, laterite and on top you have the hard laterite right which is exposed. So, as it gets exposed to air and uh, light right, so you will find uh, it becomes harder and harder right. So, this is uh, shows the climatic zone. So, basically we are in uh, semi arid area and uh, so entire most of the Deccan you will find it, it is the same scenario. Bidar especially is in that particular condition, Bidar, Bijapur uh, falls in that particular condition. It uh, uh, here as well echo uh, agroecological regions you will find it is in semi arid kind of 
situation right now uh, the aquifer systems if you look at so entire area is uh, basalt so uh, the uh, water that we find here is in the uh, vesicular basalt or the layers that are uh, uh, you know just just below the surface which is uh, broken into uh, you can say uh, it is in the form of small chips that you can just uh, no it, it comes out in the form of flakes you can say so that is the condition of basalt uh, uh, just below the uh, uh, so uh, the surface uh, depositions that we have sedimentary depositions that we have or the uh, you know soil that we have so th that is where the uh, water is there or in the fractures of basalt right so we have to identify the exact fracture no then dig a bore well then you get water otherwise it is very difficult to get water in the entire uh, deccan plateau region but uh, uh, and uh, the uh, difference here is the uh, laterite structure that is coming in uh, in the bidder area right where uh, you have uh, uh, no laterite is something uh, like uh, a sponge right no it is uh, full of pores it and it will allow lot of water to enter in and you have this hard basalt at the uh, basement right so this entire thing becomes a huge uh, water storage you now aquifer uh, basically so uh, here you will find it is not the deep ground water that these systems are tapping these are tapping the uh, uh, what you, what we call as the unconfined aquifer that it is not below the confining layer uh, normally bore wells and all go beyond the confining layer and uh, uh, they tap the water so uh, bidder uh, you will find uh, the, you know the entire 600 square kilometer of plateau is uh, made up of this particular stuff called laterite so it might have taken millions of years to uh, uh, that uh, laterite material to get created so uh, all along the coast wherever you will find uh, uh, there is 100 centimeters or more rainfall right uh, all along uh, goa if you go karnataka coast uh, coastline the entire the uh, western ghat segment or uh, the uh, ke entire kerala right you will find uh, uh, midland area of kerala you will find laterite is the uh, and that acts as a very good aquifer as well right all the uh, landslides that you might have been hearing in kerala happens mostly because of uh, too much water getting into uh, in um, you know too uh, uh, angled slopes maybe beyond the 40 degree of angle so where it ca it cannot hold and it bursts off and comes down right so that now the methodology that i have been so i have given the uh, mapping methodology here so this is what i have been doing using the base maps you know osm maps are there uh, survey of india maps which uh, uh, i have been using and uh, uh, mostly using a mobile app uh, sw maps it's a very handy app now you can directly uh, map it on that so and you uh, because you have this google earth uh, right at the back end of that so you can exactly locate where you are so uh, makes it easier right uh, it's a little better than the uh, google maps itself right because you can draw on this now google maps you can just po make a point only that uh, location pointing only can be done right so uh, have used various uh, uh, satellite imagery and all uh, so uh, to get uh, uh, you know various other layers into it and uh, one of the major work that i have done is to find out the uh, groundwater potential zones right because uh, you know those days they might have done water divining to find these potential zones and then bring water to areas where it is not there right so uh, when you see the uh, cross section of uh, uh, the uh, bidder uh, Kare system, you'll understand that why uh, why I am talking uh, uh, about this, right? So this is a very important thing, and based on this only we can do any conservation work, also, right? If if we have to do so, and uh, my entire uh, thesis deals with uh, 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 deals at a landscape level approach, right? Uh, wherein we are looking into uh, various aspects, that is the uh, physical characterization, biological characterization, cultural characterization and the socio economic characterization so that that is what i have done and then uh, we have put it into a <laughs> right uh, in a, even uh, i have looked into policies because now policy side uh, we are very weak right uh, especially in heritage conservation sector in india we don't have uh, good policies that are in existence we have some uh, uh, policies uh, which are inbuilt within the master plan like zoning regulations and all which we can apply or asi regulations if you start applying we will have to evict people 
right and that is simply not possible uh, uh, you know in a in a, in a dynamic environment as such right so lot of uh, uh, things we did lot of meetings with uh, uh, people there in uh, bidar right uh, we'll come to bidar story in a while so i'll just uh, uh, show you the maps uh, uh, this is bidar so this is the system i am working on and uh, there are two other systems uh, in bidar right uh, uh, one is called the uh, jamna mori which uh, uh, which uh, is a very interesting system because it is uh, uh, within the two forts right so we'll uh, come to that in a while then the longest one is uh, the shukla tirth now uh, shukla tirth uh, starts from uh, again uh, right in front of a lake now, uh, on all these lakes the, that you find here they had uh, uh, created for ground water recharging so that the system uh, system always has water right it functions uh, in a good manner we'll come to the details of it in a bit right uh, this is uh, bijapur the uh, probably the most complex one of the most complicated ones i have seen in uh, uh, india right uh, it uses uh, one of the best uh, watershed planning right it uses uh, terracotta pipelines it uses uh, <laughs> small uh, no shallow tunnel systems and lot of uh, methods that they have adopted to uh, catch the runoff and you no know, put it into and diesel it and then put it into the uh, uh, system right so uh, we we'll, i'll i'll explain it now here uh, thing is the green line that you are seeing th that might have been the oldest uh, kare system now oldest part of it and then later when the population uh, expanded or the increased they needed more water and that is when they uh, expanded the system to the Uh, outer side and they were also planning a new city right navraspura uh, which is uh, uh, outside the bijapur uh, so this is the main fort there uh, which you, the city and all and you have the citadel here right so currently uh, they were planning a new uh, city and you can see a huge city wall around and the city wall itself was acting like a, a embankment in many places no uh, they were using it uh, to tap water run off water uh, hold it so that uh, you know it can come into Uh, these streams right on and uh, get connected to the mother well that is there right uh, this is aurangabad aurangabad only two systems i have mapped it completely right i have gone around there are more than that uh, as you have seen uh, in the uh, uh, earlier slides i think 14 of them are there right so the uh, these two are major ones and uh, uh, the site is a uh, well known site as well panchaki right most of you might have gone there as well right so uh, again you can see lakes no uh, watershed management methods have been applied in a, a huge manner then the other one is nahare ambari so you find lot of references about uh, uh, this particular system malik kafur and uh, the you know uh, engineers uh, from persia he had brought in engineers from persia to do this uh, system right ahmednagar uh, the this uh, map is based on the information that i got from uh, uh, aurangabad there is a gazetteer 19 1884 gazetteer uh, uh, of uh, this one so whatever they had so i had uh, pinpointed the locations the place names and then based on that i had created this map and uh, you'll find uh, you know most of it ends in the city the fort area and wherever it ends uh, they say uh, you know uh, the uh, gazetteer says that there was a cistern so uh, where they used to collect the water and supply it you know anyone could access it and some of them were uh, uh, for gardening purposes etc right uh, burhanpur uh, most of you might be aware about uh, this one the kundi bhandara which is well known right uh, um, as such right there are a few other systems also the one that you are seeing kala doh system is a basically pipeline system right uh, which was uh, done earlier and uh, this is again ahu khana this is uh, again a uh, something similar to what we have in uh, pune right so uh, they have tapped a uh, you know they have constructed a, do a dam on a small stream and then they are diverting water to the ahu khana is the place where uh, uh, mumtaz mahal right mumtaz mahal's uh, initial burial was done right <coughs> so this is uh, uh, again this is the deepest one that i have seen in india there is uh, it's around uh, 90 feet deep and uh, it is entirely in alluvial soil so that is the 
difference right so i'll uh, take you through some photographs and, uh, and explain the uh, character defining elements so earlier you might have seen lots of the uh, wells uh, on the tunnel right so these are these are the uh, you know, how they look like right so uh, in alluvial uh, you know burhanpur it is entirely very soft material alluvial material so the distance between wells is very short right you have only 20 meters that that is the uh, difference the distance you have between uh, uh, each vents this is these are either called as uh, uh, you can say uh, air vents or vertical shafts right and uh, uh, this is in aurangabad this is very near to bibika makbara right so uh, wherever i see this i just get down and <laughs> the check right so sometimes you find snakes and all right and uh, uh, sometimes it is dangerous this is uh, uh, Bijapur, this is one of the shallow uh, aqueducts that uh, you have and uh, Bijapur itself uh, this is uh, uh, deeper this around 60 feet deeper so this is the vent from where you can climb down but the, they were covered basically so they uh, you know it was uh, uh, they had a gumbad kind of a covering uh, uh, you know, and only few were opened uh, actually they had this maintenance channels you know, wherein they could enter we can see uh, certain places there are staircases and all wherein uh, we can get into the system right bidar uh, it is entirely laterite there is no basic protection and all uh, uh, a few of them are smaller this is a huge one this uh, uh, is uh, probably uh, 12 by 12 right that is the 12 uh, 12 meters by 12 meters that is the size of uh, uh, that particular vent but there are smaller vents also 4 by 4 uh, are also there right sorry 12 feet by 12 feet and uh, this is uh, 4 by 4 is also there right smaller ones so uh, bidar it is the distance between each vent is around 50 meters because it is harder material right uh, bijapur again uh, in certain sections it is close by right uh, uh, 20 meters and certain section it is uh, 40 to uh, 50 meters right uh, uh, aurangabad also you will find uh, in a comparatively good distance Right, so, uh, some sections you will find it is close by 20 meters uh, or so right. So, this is how it looks from the surface and uh, when we look inside this is how it looks like. So, uh, the only round ones are the ones which uh, uh, which are there in uh, Burhanpur right rest all of them are uh, square or rectangle in shape right. So, uh, these are all uh, two of them are from Aurangabad and uh, it is still being used you can uh, this one. So, this is Bijapur which is uh, uh, nearly uh, 60 feet deep right. So, here uh, me uh, Aminuddin had uh, Aminuddin Hullur. So, he had helped me to get down these uh, vents right and uh, some of them are well constructed you will find uh, wherever it is shallow you will find it is well constructed they have used lime mortar and bricks to uh, do the construction and uh, some places in uh, Bijapur you will find the you know, where the top soil is loose they have uh, done you know they have provided very good protection and the inside gallery yeah so, sorry i mean before you uh, yeah. i am not a geographer so huh. that's why i am asking this question hmm. when you get inside the wall hmm. uh, well what are the uh, and you mean you are checking physically as well as are you using certain technology to map or uh, identify what are those characteristics? No, uh, uh, actually, uh, no. Uh, uh, first thing, no. Uh, uh, when I started surveying in Bidar, so I never knew, no, uh, where the tunnels are. So uh, the only thing that I could do was get down and check whether uh, there is a tunnel uh, at the bottom end of it, right? So uh, because one one well will be connected with the other well uh, with the help of a tunnel. So that is the only thing that we were checking initially. So the and uh, uh, equipments wise uh, uh, it is very difficult right uh, the only equipment that we normally use is gpr or the uh, ground penetrating radars right or uh, 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 we can do electrical you uh, know uh, vertical electrical sounding sounding so there uh, there is a, a equipment called uh, aquameter right uh, developed by indian uh, organization in pune anvic systems right and uh, 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 there is a uh, modern equipment that has come from china uh, an advanced version of uh, the, uh, this uh, uh, one wherein electromagnetic waves are sent and uh, we can capture what is there below. But again we may not be able to capture the void spaces because tunnel is a void space we may not be able to capture that we, we can capture the resistivity of the material only. 
So uh, uh, I am told that these guys have developed a Chinese guys have developed a uh, again an another instrument wherein you can map the wide spaces also. I am just trying to find out what it is, right? So because uh, most of the places we cannot enter uh, into these spaces, right? Uh, Bidar itself it was very difficult. Bidar, uh, whatever you are seeing is after we had removed the debris. So initial uh, times the space was so so small that we had to crawl right between the uh, vents. So th uh, th that tight it was. So here all these you will find the structure wise there is difference. These are Aurangabad it is very shallow. Uh, the uh, process of uh, creating these tunnels were uh, open trenching right. So uh, entire Aurangabad, Ahmadnagar uh, you will find uh, Ahmadnagar and certain sections in Bijapur you will find they, have, they were dug uh, uh, no, they, had, they had done open trenching and they had constructed and closed it right. So you will find uh, uh, roof is very interesting in Aurangabad you will find Aurangabad as well as Ahmadnagar there are uh, roofers either you know, made of uh, uh, br uh, brick and lime mortar or they have used uh, uh, basalt slabs. So you will find it is in triangular or it is uh, you know basalt slabs have been just uh, kept horizontally. So you will uh, find uh, 3 to uh, you know 4 types of this one. Uh, in Burhanpur uh, you will find they have used brick mortar to uh, you know protect the walls right even uh, the uh, roof side of it because it is sedimentary material because as the flow of water increases so it is ten, uh, it tends to get eroded. So now there is a natural protection also that has come in in uh, Burhanpur you will find lot of lime right you know uh, lime secretions that has happened. So, it has got deposited. So, just like uh, limestone caves you might have learned now uh, stalactite, stalagmite. So, such kind of depositions you can see that is why that white color uh, can be seen. Photographing is very difficult. So, uh, <laughs> right, inside there is no light and uh, uh, Bijapur this is the uh, tunneled section and this is the trenched section. So, you have an entire construction in Bijapur is uh, using uh, uh, basalt stones. <coughs> Uh, here uh, in Bidar it is entirely tunneling there is no uh, section where uh, they have done the uh, construction or protection as such because it is hard laterite as such right. But uh, you will find different shapes right uh, inside the uh, uh, some have this uh, uh, no inverted V shape or uh, some have this uh, arch shape right or some are just nearly flat. So, they have uh, done the you no know, maybe different uh, people were working in different sections. So, that is why different designs are there for it, but there are sections where you will find roof has collapsed and there you uh, the uh, height of the you know uh, roof uh, is much higher right. Um, uh, normally the height is just 6 feet you no know, around 6 feet only right and the base is uh, uh, nearly um, uh, 1.5 to uh, 2 feet that is the width that you have. Right, but certain sections there where uh, no uh, in Bijapur and all you will find it is 10 to 12 feet wide where it is uh, no open trenching has been done. <coughs> then uh, this is the roof section uh, this is from Aurangabad. So, you will find the basalt stones no kept like this and constructed this is the where uh, you have the brick uh, brick and lime mortar construction that has been done right. Again there uh, <laughs> another interesting feature is use of uh, pipes right terracotta pipes uh, uh, in uh, the system. So, there are um, multiple methods that uh, terracotta pipes have been used in uh, Aurangabad. So, uh, within the you know they have used horizontal pipes within the Aurangabad uh, system. So, uh, maybe between two sections of tunnel uh, in case there is some geological you know uh, uh, construction related issue or it is it is getting collapsed frequently they what they have done is they have put pipes right uh, huge pipes uh, probably you know uh, 8 to 16 inches in diameter right. So, the, the huge pipes they have put so and uh, they have put lime concrete all around it so that it gets it remains protected right. Uh, and here uh, th these kinds of structures which is called as bomma right uh, any other name for it. Bamba, uh, Bamba, right? Huh. So, uh, uh, you, uh, because local names, these are mo mostly local names, but these are uh, uh, towers wherein pipelines are running actually. You will find pipelines are running in inverted U shape. It is basically to maintain the pressure of source, right? So, here there are 2 to 3 different types of uh, uh, Bombas or Bombas you will find, right? So, some wherein the there is a tank on top 
right and the uh, you know pipeline brings water and then again the atmospheric pressure is created and then it moves further right so uh, such kind of things can be seen this is uh, bijapur where uh, uh, to circumvent a hillock right so entire uh, section has been 2 to 3 kilometers they have uh, you know they are taking pipeline on the surface so uh, while they are taking on the surface you will find uh, such type of structure so that uh, in case there is an air bubble that has got inside or uh, uh, to create more pressure that right, they have created such valves so uh, and uh, it also acts as a desilting mechanism right so uh, you know uh, the silt gets uh, uh, collected there similar type of tanks also can be found wherein pipes get into those tanks you know dump water and then silt is collected and then the water moves ahead right so th uh, this is the uh, so th this might have been a little higher so this is the cross section of uh, a photograph of this and cross section so such kind of uh, uh, things and you can see the lime concrete that is there all around uh, you know uh, to protect it right uh, this is from bidar right uh, wherein how they were extracting the uh, ground water right uh, uh, so th sorry the well water so you, you might find this in most of the villages right uh, uh, wherein you have a basalt slab with uh, a ring right wherein you can keep a windlass uh, you know uh, a uh, wooden wooden rod can be kept and windlass can be attached right or a pulley can be given to draw the water right this is a rectangular vent from uh, bidar which is regularly being used right? and uh, coming to the uh, uh, the mouth part of it right the uh, you will find uh, uh, this is from aurangabad so at the end of it there is a huge chamber so this was probably constructed during the british time right uh, and then further diverted uh, to for the uh, irrigation uh, purpose right so uh, this structure you will find uh, it is called gomuk right and uh, water used to sprout out the out of the mouth of this uh, 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 thing this is i think nehre ambari's uh, end point basically right uh, but most of it uh, this is not functional now that siphoning system uh, etc has been destroyed right but uh, still people uh, are using you uh, know water is flowing through this uh, channel and you will find people drawing water from this particular uh, tank right the only mouth as such that you can see is uh, is for bidar right uh, uh, the nawab kares uh, even the other systems that are there in bidar you will not find a mouth right because these guys uh, who are did it they were expert in foxhole drilling no so they uh, constructed such small uh, you know uh, incisions into the plateau uh, and then went in and then later on they expanded it right so here uh, what has happened is the cliff has collapsed so and because of which the uh, you know the tunnel got uh, exposed and that is why we are now entry actually entering through the uh, uh, th through the tunnel mouth but actually the entrance was given in the distribution channel so this is this channel so this is again 5 feet uh, uh, 5 feet deep and the space is just one one and a half not even one and a half you can say just one uh, one feet or a little more than that right you can one has to move in a uh, sideways only right and uh, you are likely to hit your head also there, there are basalt slabs on top and uh, the sides are constructed with uh, uh, laterite blocks so there is an entrance just uh, 20 meters from the uh, uh, mouth of it you have actual entrance so uh, uh, to the uh, to this particular channel and that is how they probably used to enter initially so uh, this was entirely covered right so all this uh, uh, you know huge sections uh, uh, you know or the size of the uh, uh, tunnel has increased because of collapse weathering related uh, uh, issue and the violet color that you are seeing is because uh, there is lot of uh, bauxite content in the material right laterite is uh, one of the right uh, materials that is mined for and uh, uh, as i said watershed planning was one of their uh, key elements so this is this is from uh, bijapur uh, all these you know th these are small uh, ponds there are several of them now these uh, streams have been diverted right the current streamlines that you see uh, uh, these are uh, uh, the currently existing ones but uh, probably they were they, these streamlines were from here because they people have occupied this even what i have marked as water body is presently a, uh, a you know someone is doing agriculture there it has become a uh, you know agriculture land so you have several of these uh, in the 
upper reaches from you know they are they were tapping all the runoff that they could and then they were diverting it into a uh, 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 the one where uh, here there is a but bowdy it is called right there is a small well right which is the mother well for the entire uh, bijapur system right so here uh, uh, there is a small water body and just alongside the well so uh, whatever water comes in it gets infiltrated and then it moves through the tunnel so there is a tunnel system this is a shallow tunnel system up to uh, the navraspura there is a uh, uh, jami masjid there and they, they have a huge bawdi up to that you have a very shallow tunnel and this shallow tunnel is again fed by uh, pipelines so you have uh, uh, two huge uh, constructed bawdis right wherein uh, runoff water comes in right so all, from all all sides runoff water comes in and it gets stored and then it it is diverted to the uh, this shallow tunnel there are few uh, one or two wells also in uh, along this shallow tunnel and then it moves uh, there is a huge uh, pond there uh, uh, there is a temple also lakshmi lakshmi temple uh, it is called uh, torvi lakshmi temple right uh, uh, the uh, pond is called lakshmi sarovar and uh, here another pipeline uh, comes from the uh, uh, comes uh, after collecting the runoff water from the higher higher areas in the north and all this comes down uh, and uh, you have uh, uh, no uh, more runoff collections here they, there is a small dam so all whatever water comes in you uh, know through that particular stream gets blocked and then gets collected there are several more small small check dams that they had done in the uh, uh, the head part itself or the uh, as part of their head works uh, for this particular system right and then it was carried by pipelines uh, to the main tunnels right surang there is a place called surang bawdi right which is the culmination of all these uh, 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 pipelines and from there uh, it goes in proper tunnel right there is a shallow tunnel initially and then uh, it goes into the uh, tunnel which is much deeper 60 feet deeper which is uh, uh, you know carved out through the uh, basalt sections right there you will get some some bit of ground water entering into the system and uh, there are several sarovars right and uh, uh, from uh, all from these uh, sarovars you will find there are either pipelines or small tunnels carrying water into the uh, uh, network and even uh, at uh, uh, i think it is not there in this map uh, there is uh, a place called afsal afsal khan's uh, uh, tomb right and there is a Afsal, uh, there is a sarovar also uh, named after him uh, afsal khan sarovar and there is a water diversion structure there right where you can see you know how you know uh, they were controlling water from the dam and uh, you know uh, channeling it to the uh, uh, pipelines and sending into this now now so while studying what i did was uh, uh, one of the things that i did was to classify them right how uh, you know uh, how they exist in india so, so based on several uh, you know criteria i did that so one was source of water right so uh, only two of them right uh, bidar and uh, burhanpur they uh, completely work on ground water right so the, that is uh, and th those are called as infiltration carriage systems right uh, some of them are just conveyor systems right wherein they only carry water right from either from lake surface water is you know uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, arrested uh, with the help of a dam and then uh, the whatever seepage happens right the tunnel system will be right below the uh, uh, these water bodies just like what we have in uh, uh, aurangabad uh, the harshul lake is right over the panchaki uh, system and the subsurface seepage is there that seepage comes in there is no actual ground water flow uh, into it right but actual ground water flow happens in those systems when uh, the kham river rises up during uh, you know uh, flood again it is not the uh, no, the water from uh, the uh, uh, basalt systems it is a subsurface flow right because of uh, a rise in water table that happens right <coughs> and uh, multi source uh, is the bijapur one wherein you have you no know, it cuts the water table also a certain section and uh, it also uses the uh, surface water right then uh, utility wise if you see most of our carry systems are community level systems right but there is uh, the one which we have in uh, uh, kasarkot which is called as surangas which is you can say sister concerns of uh, 
uh, right, the, these larger systems, right, they are household level systems, right. So, they are smaller, the length wise also, also it is smaller, uh, maybe 100 to uh, 200 feet, maybe maximum is 300 feet that I have seen and most of them do not have any vents, right, just like uh, uh, what we have here in uh, Kare systems, right. So, uh, and they supply 24 into 7 water supply for households. Right, uh, they, what they do is that they put a small uh, check uh, or um, uh, in, in front of the uh, at the mouth of the surangas, put a pipe so that uh, water <laughs> keeps coming 24 into 7 there is a flow to their house or they construct a small pond uh, in front of the suranga and water flows into that pond and it acts uh, it, uh, it also acts as this pond also acts as a ground water recharging uh, system. So, uh, the, that cycle is uh, maintained right. Huh? Ah, it is shallow, right? Huh? Uh, so water basically drips through and yes. seeps through and then uh, yes, okay. right. It um, it is just below. If it is just below the lake, so you have a tunnel, so automatically water will be seeping into it. So you'll find uh, once you enter this um, uh, Harshul uh, area uh, because the water was full, so it, it was li literally very dangerous to go inside. But if you see the roof, you can see uh, the droplets of water and even depositions that are there. On, uh, on the roof sections can be seen and there is a lot of silt inside, right. So, uh, beca because of it becomes it dangerous to move in, we do not know what is the depth actually. So but this, uh, hmm. Ah, yeah, there are open wells also, but open wells uh, uh, are there for in the village areas and lot. This is for basically for supplying water to the city. So, city area you may not find uh, open wells. Now, maybe they, they might have come in the later phase, but uh, uh, mostly uh, they had this uh, this system only supplying water. No, most most of the conveyor systems they are just uh, uh, ten to twelve feet deep, right? So uh, normally groundwater in these areas are much deeper. Uh, uh, for example, Bidar uh, you, you'll find groundwater uh, coming up to the surface level uh, during the monsoon season but it declines uh, uh, to nearly 25 meters or so during the summer season. So, uh, the entire uh, fluctuation can be monitored here uh, in Aurangabad and all uh, it does not come up to the surface. So, it is it remains at that uh, 4 meter uh, uh, level uh, below the surface. So, uh, so it is within that section that it is there and that also happens that 4 meter level happens during the monsoon time only. So, uh, and these uh, uh, no, uh, these are just 10 feet 10 to 12 feet below the surface these tunnels are there right. Then uh, the mode of construction which I had uh, already explained right tunneling open trenching and multiple techniques using pipelines and all they have used and uh, based on uh, the location right uh, rainfall characteristics and geo geo hydrology of the area and topography. So, uh, you will find uh, uh, no the system in Burhanpur is completely uh, dug through alluvial fan. So, alluvial fans of Satpura uh, uh, ranges right uh, in uh, Bidar you will find it is dug uh, uh, into a plateau uh, laterite plateau and uh, rest of the places you will find it is uh, nearly a flat topography uh, you know where it is dug it is shallow basically and uh, conveyor things are there architectural differences are there which you which we had seen uh, earlier right. <coughs> now, the difference between uh, the West Asian Kanats and uh, our Kanats uh, is that most uh, the uh, no the, the uh, West Asian Kanats have a very uh, clear collection segment right or the infiltration segment and that is in the mountainous region where the melt water comes into the system and uh, then rest of this uh, section acts as a uh, conveyor system only and uh, there is no usage of uh, water in the upper reaches right only in the command command area section. So, catchment area is left as it is right, it is all arid dry and uh, uh, inhospitable areas right, uh, uh, snow covered and all. So, and uh, you will find uh, once the water comes out of the mouth right, then there is uh, the usage happens. So, this is basic difference that we have uh, in India and uh, uh, the West Asian Kanats. So, so, you have uh, huge farms and all uh, in the uh, 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 command area of the 
Kare uh, systems, right? And uh, uh, you will find uh, mo the maximum section of tunnel is in the conveyor section in the uh, West Asian Kanats, right? And in Indian Kanats, you will find maximum section, especially Burhanpur and um, uh, Bidar, you will find the entire section is below the ground water, right? Only uh, the uh, just like uh, we, uh, what we have in uh, Aurangabad and all it remains above the section, right? So, most of it uh, is ground water here, right? Uh, and there it is uh, surface infiltration as well. So, this is uh, how it normally looks like in Iran. So, uh, you have uh, you know water getting collected from the mountainous areas and then it is getting used initially it, it is used by settlements and then uh, it flows out into the. Uh, so, any uh, you make a google search you get these things now Afflaj you can make a search in Oman you can find a lot of palm plantations that are there or uh, date plantations that are there right. Uh, and all of it will be in the command section right and in India you will find this is the situation. So, all along so this is the mother well of uh, Nawabad Kares and that is the mouth section. So, entire area it has cultivated entire area water is being utilized. So, all the wells are being utilized you will find uh, um, as of now the uh, pumped motor systems have come otherwise uh, they, they were using the uh, no, uh, traditional drawing methods right. <coughs> so, still in use this is uh, photographs from uh, uh, Aurangabad uh, this is from Panchaki in here right uh, you will find uh, even uh, pumping of water happens. This is uh, uh, near that uh, Gomuk and uh, right, this is very close to Kham river this, these two and uh, this is from Bidar right. You find the lush green uh, agriculture that is there right. So, and you can see the tunnel that is there No, even people uh, because ground water has been falling you will find uh, the wells have been dug deeper. So, every year people tend to go deeper and deeper. So, maximum depth that, that they can go is 30 meters right after which uh, it touches the uh, basement rock right that is the basalt rocks right. So, Naubad uh, uh, I have been studying this since uh, uh, 2012 right and there are two other systems as I mentioned earlier right other than the Jamna Mori and uh, this one. So, I will just explain this and then move ahead. So, Jamna Mori uh, starts from uh, uh, the uh, lake there right there is a uh, small lake inside uh, uh, Bidar fort which is called Bom Kondeshwara right there, there is again a lot of stories you uh, know fo uh, folklores that are uh, there in you now how they found this you know uh, the uh, uh, Bom Kondeshwara is the name of shepherd right uh, who actually uh, showed the location to uh, Ahmad Shah Wali who you know first visited this location and decided to uh, create a fort there. But if you go back in history you will find that uh, uh, the same place had a Kakatiya fort right. So, huge fort that was there and you will find uh, the uh, still there are walls and remains of uh, uh, those forts uh, you know old forts that are there of 10th century probably right. So, here the system is within the two uh, forts you have a public enclosure and a royal enclosure both are close by only. So, uh, this is part of the, uh, that fort. So, it starts from that and flows in uh, to the uh, city area the old city area and basically connects the moat right and fills up the moat uh, and keeps the moat uh, uh, always full with water right. <coughs> now, uh, uh, entire thing is based again based on watershed right. So, very very cleverly they had done, but interesting part is this is the lower area of the uh, the where the lake is it is at least uh, 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 30 40 meters below the rest of the fort right. So, the entire tunnel system cuts through below and uh, you know uh, goes to uh, goes into the city and the vents are very small right vents are pro, uh, you know possibly uh, 2 feet by 2 feet uh, that that is the and very difficult to identify now. Uh, so, all these vents uh, were identified by Gulam Yazdani somewhere in 18, uh, uh, 1850s or uh, no, 18, uh, 19, 1920s, uh, 1920s uh, uh, he had done the survey. Uh, uh, 18, 18 vents he had identified and uh, while uh, uh, you know these uh, uh, 
um, uh, PWD, they were working uh, on uh, infrastructure construction, no drainage construction, no. they uh, no, uh, uh, often come across uh, these kinds of tunnel systems inside. So, there are two levels here, right? One, you will find shallow tunnels also, uh, which were basically drainage systems, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, wherein you will find from households, you no know, small terracotta pipes lead to that, and uh, so uh, there are deeper ones, which are uh, the carriage systems basically. So we uh, know these uh, lines uh, we were able to, um, you know, uh, branches we were able to identify because of these PWD works, right? So they they start digging and they find, uh, you know, there is a big uh, uh, hole, right? And uh, lots of it was destroyed because in uh, uh, road expansion programs and all, no, some of these vents uh, uh, went missing. So now we cannot, we are unable to identify the uh, what is there inside the uh, city area, and there is no entry or exit that is that we can see from the surface, right? Uh, you know, in case we want to go, we have to either get into the moat and then uh, uh, find a source uh, for it, right? And that is the scenario in Bidar. And uh, this remains. Uh, uh, one thing I have seen is that this. Uh, has good amount of water throughout the year, it never uh, dries up. So, I have uh, no, uh, how did I estimate that? I estimated it using no surveying um, most of the wells there, right. So, you know what is the general water table in that area, right. And this is the other one uh, which runs from uh, another uh, uh, no, medieval time uh, uh, lake at uh, Gornali Kere, and right in front of it, you have the uh, mother well for it. And from there, it supplies water to the. Uh, it brings water uh, to the edge of the uh, plateau, right? And from there, again, uh, you won't see the. Uh, th there is no entry to it. Again, there is a foxhole uh, type of channel that they have created, right? And it uh, uh, then uh, it gets connected to a pipeline, right? And it, the pipeline supplies water to a, a village uh, called uh, uh, Agrahara. Uh, so, th that is the, uh, th that is and th there is another channel which leads to the moat and from moat it uh, the water goes to this uh, huge kere that is there inside right Bom Kondeshwara kere. So, uh, so this is the major line uh, you know which is bringing lot of water right if you uh, enter any time you will find lot of water is there in that and that is one which is polluted as well right because people do not know about these systems and they have connected their uh, sanitary pipelines into it. Right. So, we came to know uh, because the Bidar fire station was pumping this water right, uh, for uh, uh, no, their daily use uh, purposes and all. Right. So, from there they started you know, uh, getting this uh, 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 unwanted smells and all then uh, 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 that is how they found that. I right. will be quick. So, this is uh, the cross section of uh, Naubad Kares which uh, I have been working on. So, uh, you will find all these red marks are vents that have been closed, right. So, this uh, we came to know. Uh, so, initially we know that there, there might be vents because you know it is very difficult to find. Uh, so, we had one odd all these blue vents were there uh, active when I surveyed in the initial part. So, how many vents were there in between was unknown. Then uh, uh, 2015 they uh, started digging through uh, this one, right, and uh, we started cleaning it and we found uh, several new vents. So, all these vents 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15 all are open now. You can uh, see those vents there and uh, up to 19 uh, except for uh, uh, one well I think in between uh, uh, rest rest all are open right uh, as of now. Then uh, uh, this section is uh, uh, very rich in water. Uh, and always remains you, you will not find any well drying off in this particular section. So, this, so this is where it starts and moves and interesting part is if you see the uh, surface profile right the tunnel runs uh, right against that surface profile right and uh, this side is uh, uh, one stream that is that side is another stream right both tributaries of uh, uh, Godavari basin, but again you can say it is uh, uh, no uh, transfer of water from one basin to another basin is happening right so this is the general uh, slope but it is not like that so what you will find is uh, the between the vents right the, uh, you know, the what they have done is they have made it in a little c shape right so water doesn't uh, gush through uh, you know faster so it stops fills stops fills and goes so that uh, erosion is not there because this 
rock is prone to uh, you know uh, erosion much much faster it can be eroded and uh, once it enters the mouth so here you have the actual entries here uh, this cliff was something like this so this section has collapsed and that is why we have an entry there now right so this is the original entrance and then you have this uh, 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 small channel and the channel also has vents right uh, two, two to three vents are there and then it opens up in a kalyani right a, a small pond like thing which is used by bo both by a temple now it has been named as siddheshwar kalyani because the temple is using it but uh, uh, this was uh, probably in existence long back or uh, probably when this uh, system was created mm -hmm. so this is the photographs of motherwell 2012 august when i first visited this is October uh, and normally you will find Bidar gets very good amount of rainfall uh, after August right September uh, is the main period when no August and September is the main period when you get good amount of water and October it is full most of the wells are full right uh, the uh, you know some of them even overflow right you can imagine the uh, segment. So, this is you now these wells are here right the, these all these wells are here right. So, uh, this is lower than the other areas right and uh, if you look into the I uh, will show you the map. So, uh, there, there is a physical map we will we'll come to that right. So, uh, if you look into that so you will find the flow of water is towards that mother well. So, that is why it always remains high uh, you know it uh, the water does not dry even during uh, uh, no, uh, up to May, end of May. So, you will find water flow in the outer the mouth part is less, but uh, you will find mouth part uh, the mother well side the water level is very high at that time also right. So, this is the uh, Kalyani that I was talking about this is a tunnel that takes uh, or the channel that takes water to the this Kalyani right. So, this is how they might have dug the entire system. So, both horizontally and vertically they might have simultaneously worked and that is why you find uh, the systems are different or the shapes of uh, the gallery is different and uh, certain sections inside the tunnel you will find they have created bypasses and all right. So, certain section if it is weak what they have done is they have dug another uh, well they have connected it uh, and bypassed this uh, weak section. So, you will find uh, you know uh, some sections you will find it is no right angle the entire uh, uh, tunnel system is turning and uh, uh, moving. So, hard, harder the laterite sometimes it is very difficult to dig. So, uh, and if it is too soft it is likely to collapse as well. So, between vents uh, uh, 9 and 10 there is a huge spring that is working right. So, uh, the spring uh, yields uh, around uh, uh, 35 liters in uh, uh, 1 minute can imagine the flow of water that is during the uh, uh, lean period that I am talking right. So, when it is uh, uh, in the rainy season you can imagine the you can see huge sound uh, you know uh, uh, here huge sound during the rainy season water falling into the uh, system right. So, this is how it was when I first arrived in Bidar. So, this uh, you uh, know entire when uh, when we went so there was one person who helped me uh, uh, so we we were the two who were climbing down all these uh, <laughs> vents you know he is a he is an expert uh, uh, person uh, who cleans up wells and all so uh, so he was there he and the two others were there who were holding the rope on top and uh, we entered in most of the vents some of them you know we could enter only the vents because there was no access to the tunnels because it was all filled with debris because all these years it has not been cleaned and all. So, and uh, most of the vents were like this. So, you can imagine how uh, difficult it might have been and uh, above that we had to face uh, vipers right <laughs> bats right <laughs> lots of it was there inside and some of the vents uh, and uh, step wells there it was used for dumping waste right you will find all kinds of waste no vent number 6 we found uh, animal carcass you know uh, lying there. So, uh, then we had to remove it you uh, know it was nearly half decayed condition we removed it you uh, know took a pit and uh, uh, closed it down. So, otherwise you no know, it, it will directly enter the water now people what people do not understand is that you know this water is the same water they are drinking from their well. So, and uh, this is the uh, probably a 10th century or 11th century dam right uh, 
which they these guys had rightly utilized so during those periods you know kakatiya those period they had this uh, habit of doing uh, mud embankments so this is one such mud embankment which is there in nobad but uh, uh, you know made of good uh, uh, black clay uh, it is being mined uh, by a person for uh, making bricks that right, you can imagine the situation so we gave a case against him all his uh, 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 what you call equipments were all seized so like that it is uh, no it is lying in a pretty uh, <laughs> disturbed manner now right. so this is uh, the uh, physical map of it you can see the uh, elevation change so the areas where the kanath is ending or the karez is ending is higher than the areas where it is starting it also has a branch line so here this this is the place where you have that uh, huge embankment the 10th century embankment which can you know which probably uh, because i i uh, was checking the silt amount that has been deposited so probably it had a depth of 12 meters from the embankment level so uh, it might have held uh, you know uh, a good amount of water the area was somewhere around uh, 1.34 square kilometers of area so entire runoff used to come uh, the uh, Uh, the reason why it became uh, uh, unused was the railway line that came in so railway line is lying between the slopes from where the runoff comes and uh, the uh, uh, what you call the uh, embankment that is there so what they have done is the railway guys they have diverted they have put two uh, exit channels for water uh, under the railway but they are outside the uh, limits of uh, this particular uh, uh, you know water system or surface water body and these are all lineaments or lineaments are nothing but fractures that are there deep fractures that are there and these are the uh, things where through which uh, water flows right and uh, uh, you will find this is very close to the lineament and some of them cut across the system and that is why too much water flow is there in the uh, system Th that is the drainage network of the area the, the, these maps show geology you can see the entire section the plateau section Uh, from where the karay system is there is laterite and uh, the command area uh, of it is in the uh, uh, basaltic section so this is below the surface okay and uh, the aquifer material you can say it is uh, permeable uh, material that is there and highly permeable material that is there right <laughs> and this is what i have been doing so uh, uh, this is uh, monitoring the water table right so this i have done for nearly 8 years or so 2000 12 to 20 uh, so this is only one years map that i have put here so every month uh, a particular day uh, particular time we used to uh, record this uh, uh, thing right uh, and uh, so you can see uh, october it starts becoming green so that means the level of water is uh, 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 very high right uh, water quality i have just put one map here this uh, shows the coliform contamination that is there because lot of area uh, uh, where, where close to settlements are being used as open defecation grounds and all so uh, uh, coliform bacteria influences and uh, even settlements that are very close to it so you don't have proper sanitary pits now uh, that also results into uh, this one and animal coliform related things are also there right land use change you'll find urbanization is uh, kicking in a uh, lot of changes new infrastructure coming in you can see this uh, there is no road road network here this is road network here this is very close to the mother well right a uh, huge uh, you know uh, new, new road multi multi lane road has come so you'll find uh, the agriculture area is declining and the urban area is uh, slowly increasing so uh, the uh, after doing lot of studies using equipments and all uh, we arrived and we found that the high potential areas of groundwater is uh, from where these guys have dug tunnel right so how we don't know how they found that area so they they had very good mechanism of water divining right either they were using uh, biological methods right there are no biological plants and uh, other species that can be used to identify the location of water or they were using some other you know maybe uh, digging uh, what you call uh, uh, test wells and finding with whether the water will be there or not right so uh, recharge then uh, from this i found the recharge grounds now this area cannot be used for recharging because the water level comes up to the surface and uh, uh, likely chances of pollution is higher 
if we do recharging there. So, uh, other areas have been uh, surrounding areas have been uh, marked for recharging. Another interesting thing uh, development that is happening recently is uh, an STP has been put there right STP is sewerage treatment plant right <laughs> you can <laughs> and that is in the area where. Uh, so, this is the different structures that we will be bringing into use to uh, uh, do recharging work and all right um, uh, basically uh, you know where uh, tanks you know nala buns etcetera which we can you know help more water to infilter and uh, revive the ground water in that area. Now, applying norms is sometimes very difficult right. So, this is uh, uh, based on the ASI norm 300 meter buffer. So, if we uh, go by this there are lots of settlements within it and uh, we will have to <laughs> evict them now, and mo entire property except for maybe an acre or two rest of the area is all uh, private holdings right. Only thing that we can do is do lot of stakeholder consul consultations and then and many of them do agree you know uh, this Nawad junction there is a huge uh, uh, function hall right marriage function hall we uh, he had actually closed one of the vents which is the junction well of the entire system right uh, where the branch went and uh, the uh, main main line joints. He allowed us to dig you know we were digging inside his uh, uh, function hall right uh, uh, we excavated it we cleaned the entire system on towards both sides then sealed it and gave it to him. So, uh, such people are also there who are very cooperative and there are people who do not cooperate as well right. So, uh, uh, this uh, cadastral level uh, studies were also done to understand the socio-economic categories and all now. And uh, uh, when we when I inquired uh, no, when my, I was doing the socio-economic study. So, people who are living in that Naubad area is mo are mostly migrated. So, the, uh, those who have the agriculture plots are only the traditional guys who are there and who are interested in protecting the system. But those who have migrated and settled down there they are neither bothered about the system nor they are interested. But the only interest that they have is they want water right. So, they want water in the well. So, that is the only point of interaction with them that happens. So, the team which worked on uh, restoring it it was all uh, Karnataka government's uh, support with which we were doing it right. And uh, this is uh, uh, this person who is uh, here uh, I took him from Kasar code because he is the only person who knows to work on such water tunnels. He digs uh, uh, he is no more there. Uh, uh, he is one Suranga expert uh, uh, Mr. Kunjambu. So, he is the one he I took him there for training purpose, but he started working on the system right. He was the one who cleaned the entire uh, the distribution channel and uh, he is uh, already at the time he was already 74 years of age. So, you can imagine his energy right. So, this is how it looks like uh, uh, after cleaning right. Uh, uh, you can see the different shapes and size uh, of the and many places you have you no know, the, the collapsing had happened. So, this is the first time when we found water <laughs> inside when we were digging it is a this is how it is inside. So, these are new vents being uh, uh, excavated. So, th those which were closed and uh, uh, this happened during the uh, uh, 2015 September when the first time we saw the entire system functioning well. So, uh, 2000 uh, I was there up to September 12 there I left and uh, uh, it, it was raining when I left. So, uh, next 2 to 3 days it was uh, the it rained more heavily and uh, on 15th September uh, it started flowing now it is uh, established. No, but there was the, there was some issues as well because surface, surface water was also entering into the system it was not just the ground water. And uh, I mapped them. So, I had been mapping them uh, ground water table. So, all these uh, months and uh, that is the situation in September. So, September 12 map and September 20th map you can see the green you know how uh, it gets recharged it is, it is you know laterite is such a sponge that it can you know acquire water much easily. So, this is these are pictures from that. Uh, so, I was doing the uh, I kept flume to measure, but uh, the water started overflowing the flume. Right, then we had to keep more uh, sandbags and do the measurement. So, we found uh, uh, 120 liters per minute that was the flow rate at the time and it, the system is still not fully functional only a kilometer of it only has been cleaned. And uh, we have been doing some uh, uh, you know water uh, quanti quantification basically. 
and we found the last year uh, we found it as more than 44,000 uh, sorry 44 lakh liters per minute right the outflow. So, which which, which is good enough uh, for it to be put as a uh, decentralized uh, you know water system you know. normally be there faces acute shortage during summer season right. So, this is uh, some significance of it. So, we are in uh, we can think about and the moment it uh, no water started coming people started coming in. There is a village called Aliabad which is very close by and uh, uh, you cannot dig a well there you cannot dig a bore well there because entire uh, thing uh, the geology crumbles down right uh, it uh, everything fails right. So, the only source of water for them was this uh, 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 what you call this spring right. So, uh, most of them for washing their clothes you know they come come here to this particular place. And uh, the moment it started you will find so current challenges you know right uh, now our urban planning has a biggest you uh, know biggest flaw is that we do not consider heritage to be part of it at all right you know it is something like alien stuff for them. So, we never look into that and none of our master plans you will find it is integrated with uh, the uh, uh, heritage related issues right. Groundwater pollution so just like I said the uh, coliform right. Uh, laterite system it is entirely porous one one small pollution in one place it will spread to the other places. Now, Bidha has another huge issue that is going to you know shortly come up uh, in future pharmaceuticals right. There are lots of pharmaceutical companies and they have been dumping waste into the laterite system and we uh, will we'll see right uh, you know the, there are studies coming up now. So, probably and there is lot of policy gap right we have uh, uh, water policy, we have ground water policy, we have uh, conservation related. So, th there is no connectivity between any of these right which uh, uh, creates lot of gap in between right. This is what we can do with it, uh, but uh, do not know how much can be. So, now something that I have been doing is spreading the knowledge right and uh, spreading the know how you know uh, that such system is there in existence right and people can uh, do something about it. So, this can be a good uh, uh, decentralized water system and it is the only system in uh, of all these uh, 38 ones which can be completely revived none of the others can be because you know, all others are passing through dense urban uh, uh, conditions and it is very difficult to evict people and uh, you know uh, recover these systems right. right. And uh, uh, another major point is we can convert these tunnels as uh, uh, subterranean uh, reservoirs we can use them for uh, groundwater recharging now we can uh, you know carries we can make it carries wires right we, it becomes a uh, uh, huge uh, reservoirs as such right and uh, urban planning what we actually have forgotten this uh, watershed based urban planning methods you know, if you go to all these medieval cities or even before you no know, the ones we which we had the, the Kakatiya period or uh, no any of these forts you will find you will find that they have uh, they, you know, they have that very beautiful system that whatever water comes in right either it goes inside and whatever waste water is there it drains out properly you know very very beautiful uh, network of system is there right. And uh, tourism of course you know people have started uh, have started visiting it and uh, you know what happens you know you see a well normally first thing you do is spit it right into it. So, th this this is happening there everywhere right. Uh, 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 this this these can become like real time uh, learning museums right uh, now where people can study and uh, right. So, that is it from my side. So, I took uh, I think uh, more time than <laughs> right, thank you. Yes, any questions? I mean, it is remarkable work, no question. <laughs> thank and you. I was just like thinking uh, <laughs> because a lot of times when we deal with people, we forget the amount of intelligence that goes into physical systems, right. And it just makes me appreciate history and geography a bit more. Than <laughs> right. <I otherwise. laughs> so, just a small question. Mm. So, like as Man said, it's mm. a wonderful work, and we have not been knowing this. System. Right. Mm -hmm. So, in Maharashtra or Karnataka, there are specific castes which know well digging. Yes. So huh. Did you find any such castes or you know some uh, groups which have been linked to uh, such system uh, generationally? They might not be doing it. Mm -hmm. Have you found such a no, the, there are you know uh, people who are associated with well digging, but uh, we could not find uh, uh, anyone who is uh, who has been doing this kind of work, tunneling related works. No, there are many uh, who are there who 
uh, normally do it. Uh, just like Kasarkod, I said, no, there are trained people, you know, uh, just like Kunjambu is there, there are few more who, one of them uh, was awarded the Padma Shri, I think last year or year before last, right? I think last year, right? Um, uh, so, there are people who know tunneling also, but in lat, right? But there are very few uh, in Karnataka, even uh, and in Maharashtra who, right? we even enquired because there is a huge uh, Iranian community there in um, uh, Bidar. So, uh, even uh, in their uh, uh, no fraternity, they do not know right, anyone who has been, because you know, Bidar is a place where uh, you will find lots of other communities as well, because the kings were using uh, mercenaries, right. So, Abyssinians were there, uh, who were settled in uh, uh, these places. So, the skills may have come from many places, engineers may have come from, probably it is the Indians who might have done the digging job <laughs> probably, right. So, and uh, if you go to uh, this uh, very near place, there is called something called Papanash, right? there is a huge lake, 10th century lake in within in Bidar, you will find some small caves, you know, which uh, uh, you know, people have been digging to do meditation and all. So, uh, so this technology or the digging part might have been there earlier also, you know, people may have utilized them uh, as such, right. Mm -hmm. right. Papanash. So, the, there is a story behind it uh, that is uh, the uh, after Sri Rama uh, left uh, uh, what you call uh, the uh, Sri Lanka, right, he came to Papanash, did all the Mukti Puja there for, uh, so, so his uh, Pushpak Viman is supposed to have landed <laughs> there, <laughs> then uh, right. Uh, so, there are lots of such kind of stories that you will find. <laughs> So, Bijapur I said, na, Bijapur there is a uh, story of uh, 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 Ibrahim, uh, Ibrahim Adil Shah having worshipped uh, uh, goddess Ganga, right, and uh, uh, you know bringing water to uh, the system. So, he was asked not to look back, right. So, Ganga said, okay, I am happy with you, I will come with you to Bijapur, but you should, you are not supposed to look back. So, it is said that very near to Bhat Bhavdi, he looked back and that is from where the system <laughs> starts <laughs> and there is a beautiful painting also right i'll just show you that right uh, of this uh, thing i think i have somewhere in my paper it is there mm -hmm. so this is that uh, photograph so this is a painting that is the, you will find it in uh, uh, lakshmi temple there torvi lakshmi temple where uh, ibrahim lodi is there right so <laughs> ganga comes <laughs> Such kind of uh, stories you will find, lots of them. Right? <laughs> right. Anything else? Is the, uh, uh, I mean the water museum, is it already underway? Or no, 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 nothing is underway because I uh, will tell you what happened. Uh, 2016, 15, 16 we were working on the system, Karnataka government, actually Karnataka government is funding, they are, they were, they were doing the job through Mandrega uh, and all. Right, uh, and uh, the uh, person who was dealing with the district commissioner, he uh, passed away, right, uh, uh, Anurag Tiwari. So, this is there, I think this paper is the, uh, will be uh, available next month, right, on Bijapur uh, entire system, right. And the other one is already there on uh, our uh, academic.edu, right. And more are there in on uh, watershed planning and all it is coming up. Right. Okay, anything else? Right. Thank you. Thank you.